Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 475 for Wednesday, August 16th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we tune our business brains together every week, sometimes twice a week, often twice a week. Sponsors for this episode include... Pearl Diver at PearlDiver.io, where you can find out information about the folks who visit your website and Shopify.com slash business brain, where you can sign up for a $1 per month trial period to take your business to the next level today. We'll talk about those two in depth in a little bit for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. I have a little tidbit for you, Dave. Yeah, man. Uh, Every year, for at least the last 25 years, it has rained. I mean, in the summertime, we're in California, it does not rain. But every year for 25 plus years, it has rained within 48 hours of my birthday. Oh. And it did so again last night with a 10% chance of rain. Well, I couldn't believe it. I looked at, we. it's a long story about what we were doing. We had a bunch of stuff outside and we were going to unload the next day. And of course, my wife looks at her... Uh, weather app because she's way more uh <laughs> you know she know watches this stuff when i don't sure she's oh, there's a 10 percent chance of rain i'm like that's never gonna happen and then she goes oh but your birthday's on thursday i think like, we better unload <laughs> sure enough while we're unloading it starts to rain i don't know what that means but it's just kind of interesting you know? it isn't your birthday today the 16th wednesday this, yeah there you go yeah the 16th because uh, uh, yeah, the, the, se- the 17th is wednesday so happy yeah. birthday there you go yeah yeah, oh, yeah. you got it yeah yeah, yeah. so oh. it's just kind of funny that's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, anyway, I'm excited to be here today. We have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. We're going to talk about your uh, hardware uh, did technology I, to start, right? Did I tell you last week that I had to buy a new computer? I don't think so. Okay, great. Well, I, I can so. tell you today that I've had to buy a new computer <laughs> again. Awesome. That's so always fun. We had a major lightning storm uh, about a week and a half ago, a week ago on Friday. And uh, like, like, Like you read about not just a lightning storm that like comes within even five miles. Like this one hit in our neighborhood. I, we have had lightning problems here at the house and the office before we've got some direct burial ethernet cable between the two. And when we first moved in, I was taught by the weather, the valuable lesson of putting ethernet surge protectors on either end of these lines. Right. So I did that and, and things are fine. I have everything. All my electronics are on UPSs, all that good stuff. This lightning storm that hit, you know, uh, 10 days ago or whatever was so close that it blew out things just from proximity. So it didn't come in through the ground. It just came in like essentially through the air. Right. It was like, Like there was an electromagnetic pulse that just blew things out. Yeah. And one of the things it blew out was not from the power, but from the ethernet cord, it blew out the motherboard on a Mac mini that uh, we have at the house that, that Lisa uses for all her work. So I had to buy one of those last week, Uh, you know, and, and we went a different way with it. We actually moved her to a full-time laptop set up with an extra screen and all that. But I, like I had to buy a computer. Last night here. So then like, and there were a couple other things that, you know, got, got blown up by, by, by that, you know, so a couple of ethernet ports and on switches and stuff. So it was fine, you know, but it was all low voltage stuff. All the high voltage stuff was totally fine. It was all the low voltage. So a lesson to all of us here, protecting your AC plugs from surges is important. And it is right. also equally important to protect your your low voltage, your DC stuff, like your Ethernet, if you still have phones, like those sorts of things, because that is where I've seen more frequent lightning damages over Ethernet mm. than over uh, than over, uh, you know, AC power. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I did that. Finally sorted it all out, rolled over to a couple of new machines last week as we sort of did the hand me down dance and that like figured out what we were going to do. It was, okay, it was fine. Last night, I come into the studio. Of course, I recorded all last week. Everything was fine. I was actually in here over the weekend a little bit. Last night, uh, I come in and to sort of prep stuff for what we're doing today. And I have a couple of monitors connected to the iMac here in the studio. Now, the iMac has a built-in screen, and then there's a couple of monitors. I wake up the computer. The extra couple of monitors wake up. No problem. The iMac screen stays black. Uh Uh-oh. Yep. 
I go Obviously. back and forth with all of this stuff, yada yada, troubleshooting, you know, do all the resets of the geeky things that you that I know how to do, and then some things that I searched on the internet to learn how to do. No, no, no. Finally, I turned on the flashlight on my phone and I shined it at the screen, and I could see all the icons and the windows and everything. It was like, ah, right. The backlight on the on the display is oh. dead. Yes. So I this morning I I set it up in a way where I actually put a second screen in front of the iMac and told that told it to mirror the internal display to the second screen and it got me limping along. You know it was fine. That's oh, good. Yeah. 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 But I'm like, all right, I got to figure out: Do I replace the screen and fix this like five year old iMac, or do I just buy a new Mac and? Uh, I found on Apple's site a, a refurb Mac studio that was like perfect for what I needed. And then I realized that our local Apple Mac shop had essentially the same thing for the same price brand new because they were trying to like liquidate some inventory and they're friends of mine. And so I was like, oh, I'll just come down and pick it up. So I rolled over to that right before perfect. we yep. did the show. And uh, this is the first thing that I'm doing on that. So if you're hearing this episode, folks, it means it worked. Good. Yeah, it, we're, it only took us an extra hour. To it did. It only it, added an hour. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and okay. thank you. Uh, but, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like I I was sort of prepared to buy a new computer for the business this year. I knew it was going to be time. I wasn't exactly sure how and when I was going to do it. And then, of course, when that first Mac died, it was like, well, now I know what I'm doing. Great. This is how it'll all work out. This is great. And then today it's like, all right, great. You get to spend another, you know, whatever, 1700 bucks or whatever it is. Like, you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's fine, but it's one of those things where, you know, it adds up. It was like, I joked, I'm like, on the way yeah. back, I'm going to stop at the blood bank and, and then, you know, pick up ramen for the family to eat for, for the next six months or whatever, uh, you know. Um, but it doesn't, I, it they do so much for us. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's uh, especially like your type of business, my type of businesses, you know, you're just, it's you, it just, they would be impossible. Well, maybe not impossible. I hate that word, but it, just think of how difficult it would be to create, manage and run, you know, these, these companies and your life in general without this technology. Oh no, you need it. And, and so yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate in a lot of ways. And, and one of them is that I have multiple computers. So when one does, you know, go belly up, I am able to just jump to another machine and work. Now the podcast machine is, is somewhat purpose built <laughs> in, in the way that it's set up. I certainly can podcast from my laptop on the road. Like we've done that before. So I can do it. It's fine. It's not as comfortable, but it's, it's doable. Right. So sure. I have these backups, uh, but it like it it shows the importance not just of having backup computers to use, but of having backups to my data too. Uh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, being able to access it, being able to mirror it, being yep. able to copy it over quickly and understand how to do it. Uh, uh, yeah, understand. Critically and important. That, yeah, and practicing what practicing restoring from your backups is something everyone needs to do before disaster strikes because th that uh, the last time you want to figure out that you don't know how to get at the data on your backups is when you need it so take some time yeah. schedule some time for yourself over the next week or two to just go through and, and practice restoring from your backups like go get something from it if you haven't done that in the last six months go do that make sure your backups are working make sure you know how to work with them so yeah yeah, disaster prep, man, really important. It, it it really, yeah, it really is. Uh, it really is important. All right. Earlier this year, we had this idea with one of our other businesses to start selling merch, like T-shirts and hats and uh, all kinds of things, just to allow our users to engage with the brand. It builds a little more loyalty, all of that stuff. We found a vendor to make all of the stuff and and make it like in real time, but th their store was like. Eh, not the best and didn't really work worldwide. It didn't do all the things we need to do. And we're like, oh no, like, what do we do? I'm like, well, wait a minute. I know what to do. I know that we should use Shopify. 
And we love it because that's the sound we hear every time there's a new sale on Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool that you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel. So whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you're covered. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. We've used this. It's fantastic. It's so cool that, you know, you get the people get stuff in their car or they start looking at something. You can follow up with them and then get them to come back. It's really, it's amazingly well done. And it, it just, it's so smooth. This is why Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global force powering Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklyn, and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up. For a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash business brain, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash business brain to take your business to the next level today. Again, that's shopify.com slash business brain. And uh, thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. And hey, do you still wonder who all those people are visiting your website, but who never convert and then just disappear you can discover the game-changing tool that top professionals are raving about, our sponsor, Pearl Diver. Pearl Diver is a cutting-edge platform that provides in-depth visitor identification, enabling you to uncover valuable insights about your website's visitors. By uncovering the names, the emails, the company details, and more, Pearl Diver empowers you to turn anonymous traffic into high-quality leads. With Pearl Diver, You'll supercharge your marketing and sales strategy. You don't have to settle for guesswork. Dive deep into your visitor data with Pearl Diver and revolutionize your customer acquisition game. Are you ready to make waves? With Pearl Diver, you will see actual people visiting your website. You'll know their names, their emails, their phones, their titles, and their company details. Never miss out on the opportunity to engage with your hottest leads. Pearl Diver matches your email interactions with identified website visitors, providing the insights you need to close your next deal. Visit PearlDiver.io and try Pearl Diver today. Again, that's PearlDiver.io. And our thanks to Pearl Diver for sponsoring this episode. Shannon, I read this, uh, this publication called Bottom Line Personal. It it's actually a printed publication. I like yeah, to it's amazing. I, I love it. I've been subscribed since I was like a teenager. I think my dad subscribed me like when I got to college or you know started working or whatever. And I've kept up with it. I like having something. It's like the one thing on paper that I read semi regularly, and I I find myself reading it while I eat lunch because it's I don't know it's it's that that's yeah, it's cool. that's my it's habit. A good publication. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was reading this article about. Um, preparing your business for your retirement, something that uh, scares me because I'm terrible at this. I, I do nothing uh, along the lines of, of getting this done. And there was a paragraph that I shared with you and I want to share with everyone here. It says reality. The vast majority of businesses can thrive without their founders, but achieving that takes some smart planning and a change in mindset. The business owner must stop being the business's hardest working employee and instead become its biggest shareholder. If someone owns shares in Ford Motor Company, he or she uh, receives dividend checks and occasionally offers input, input by, for example, voting on who should serve on the board of directors. What that shareholder doesn't do is drop by the factory every morning to bolt bumpers onto Ford F-150s. Reading this, I've known this sort of concept for a while. Work in the business, uh, on the business, not in the business. You know, there's all these catchphrases. Reading about bolting, you know, bumpers onto F-150s, that hit me. This idea of big being the biggest shareholder, for whatever reason, for me, that was the perspective that hit me. Now, 
I want to I want to see where I am with this particular project in in six months or so. They they say they they it's a great article. We'll link to it because it is available online. But one of the things they say in this piece is schedule a month long vacation for yourself and and do it like eighteen months yeah. to two years out. Right, like this is the your litmus test. Right, six months before that, take a week and in both cases, do not check in while you're gone, right? That, you know, you're, 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 if you can't do a week, six months before you're going to take a month, things aren't, you haven't, you haven't done enough, you know? And I, I just like, I found this interesting. I like this. It idea. is. Yeah. It, it's, I think, uh, when you sent this to me, I said, yeah, we should talk about this. Cause I'm, I just suck at it. But thinking about it, like the, the idea of taking a month up vacation, just I don't know, it gives me the willies, uh, the chills go up and down my spine because it would drive me nuts. But I, looking back, I th I think one of the ways I, that I managed this was I, I started another business. So I was forced to shift my attention away because I had something else going on. Okay. And so, and, and I wasn't, I was, I was, like I said, I wasn't very good at this. Like, oh, I'm just, you know, rolling in because, you know, I still had that mentality. It's like, Oh, you know, I want to be the last person there. I want to, whatever. It's just, I, I've always felt that way to probably to my own. Uh, I mean, even though things turned out well, uh, you, you, maybe it could have been much better, Who even knows? better. Right. I, yeah, hindsight. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, course. but I do, thinking specifically about this, I do know when I, st things started working good, um, you know, started one business and then th I had some time because they're right you know, most of, if things run smoothly, often you just kind of get in the way and you, you can become a gatekeeper, which is a big problem. Um, and so delegating that stuff out and letting things run, if you go back, cause I can remember this specifically going back into my office going, well, I don't know. Now what, what do I do oh. now? Right. And it kind of freaked me out. So I started making some calls, started expanding, what 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 else could I do? Can I start a different business? Is there something I want to do? I wanted to write, uh, wanted to do different things. And that pushed me along the lines because not having something to do is what freaks me out. And I think that, that held me back from letting go for years until I figured out I could just go do something else. And then, you know, I'm still there. It was my base of oper operations. Nobody knows what I'm working on. Nobody cares, <laughs> you know, quite frankly. Right. Because, I, oh, the, you know, the boss is in there, you know, he, whatever. He doesn't, we, he just slows things down, you know, and I'd get up and walk around. Hey, everything going, you know, da, da, da. Make sure I checked in with everybody. Did the Friday barbecue like I talked about all the yeah, time. Yeah. But most of the time, the day to day, they didn't need me. You had a great general manager, this kind of thing. And then I went out and started a, a, a different business. You know, I wanted to get in the TV business. That was a big mistake. Let me, let me yeah. save you a lot of trouble there. But at the time <laughs> it sounded like a great idea. Sure. Uh, then I wanted to get into the, the fashion business, which I didn't know anything about and watches and different stuff, but that kept me busy, but it also kept me away. So maybe uh, that is another way to look at this. Uh, looking I, back. I, yeah. I, I think, I think that's dangerous too, because oh. I, well, yeah. I, I, I mean, again, why is like, it dangerous? Because you dangerous take your in, eye off the ball. Dangerous in relation to what it could be like, like truly stepping back and becoming that shareholder. Right. Because yeah. I, I think that the, I, I think at its core, the, the need to, and I share this with you, so I'm, I'm not, you know, yes. I'm, I'm analyzing me as much as you. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah. I, I think that need to to work is perhaps something that that initially serves us very well. And, <laughs> oh, and oh, no, really, like getting getting businesses I agree. started. I know where you're going with this, but yeah. but in the end, it's the thing we have to let go of. And That's and I'm very not. Difficult. It's very difficult. No, I'm I'm not saying this is easy. I, I have yeah, yet to figure yeah. it out. No. Uh, but but when I watch other people do it, especially like business partners, where it's like I have a vested interest in them, you know, working on the business instead of in the yeah, business, yeah. if you will. Right. I, I it's very easy for me to see 
just how detrimental it is. And yet I, I obviously this is one as much as I am pursuing self-awareness. This is one part of it where I cannot see in the mirror. Right. As well as I would like yeah, to. Yeah. <laughs> so but I, doesn't it guide you that that it to do things that you enjoy that. that well, that's the problem this, is I, I, am, I think that's the opportunity. Yeah, well, yeah, that's I'm, what I'm saying is like it's a yeah. double edged sword. Yeah. No, it I. Is, I uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just I. I know I look at people who have made the transition to shareholder and maybe yeah. that's why this resonated so well with me because I see people who are like, Oh, they figured it out. Like what's the trick there. And then when I read this thing in bottom line and it said shareholder versus employee, essentially, I, I, uh, I do love that. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. it was like, wait, that's what these other people have done. And they, the 10 X their businesses by doing it. True. And so like, perhaps it's because I've been pursuing this thing that thus far has been a mystery to me, even though I talk to these people, we talk to some of them on the show. I have some of them like as mentors or whatever, but they're like, yeah, you just got to like stop doing this and do that. And it's like, ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. 80%. Don't know. Well, once yeah. somebody can do your job, but I would yeah. argue, have you even put effort into finding someone that could do your job because that's, no. that's the difference, right? I'm so petrified you, of that. I, that's, yeah, right. that's the thing is I, in order to, to, but that, this is why it put it in perspective for me because in order to be the number one shareholder, I therefore have to find someone to replace the yes. jobs that I do. Yeah. And, and that, for whatever reason, that's what clicked in my head. So that's why I wanted yeah. to share this. Yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. big deal. Oh no, no. It's yeah. a very good topic. Uh, it, you know, there's some parallels. There's this this uh, concept that you should always you should try to run your business like you're going to sell it tomorrow, right? I've heard this over and over. Yeah, uh, because it makes the books cleaner, the decisions. You know, so it's one of these things. But uh, I, I know that's very th I know that phrase. I I feel yeah. like that phrase, as pie in the sky as the idea of being your business's number one shareholder might be. I feel like try to run your business like you're going to sell it tomorrow is even more abstract. Yeah. And so it, it it, it, that's why it never like I understand. I agree with it, but it's like, OK, well, let's break it down. What does that actually mean? Like, how do you do that? And and maybe it was the thing about F-150s. It's like, yeah, yeah, maybe. And, and I think, you know, we started the show talking about technology. I yeah. do think it's never been easier to step away and still keep an eye on things, have different levels of control than ever before, you know, with the technology that's available with everything's online, every CRM, you know, Salesforce or whatever your stuff you're using, uh, all the Google products. So, I mean, you can be connected to your business in such a, a, a deeper level, even as a shareholder than yep. you ever could before. I would say, you know, uh, you know, the last like 20 years, even 10 years, you know, now. And and I, I read about lots of younger people, oh, we're, I'm building a holding company. I'm starting a, a pressure washing business. And then I'm starting this business and I'm starting that business. And they're kind of dash trying to dashboard this whole thing. I don't know how that will, would turn out, but um, I've always wanted my finger in each of these things a little bit more, but yep. uh, it's fascinating. And and if if you're listening and you are picking up what we've done wrong, Please tell us feedback at businessbrain.show and and we'll talk about you know your message uh, on an upcoming episode and you'll be entered to win a uh, a MacBook. Yeah. So uh, tell tell us tell us how you did it. Tell us what we're uh, what we're doing wrong. Yeah. Tell us what we're doing wrong and what we could be doing right. That I would I would love that. So yeah. Thank you so much, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing the show with your business brain tuning friends and uh keep living that charmed life we'll uh we'll see you next time